marvelous and revolutionary discoveries about gravity. A. New explanation for the source of gravity and its fluxes. B. New explanation for the structure, model, and mechanism of gravity. C. New explanation for how fluxes are generated at the gravitational source. A. New explanation for the source of gravity and its fluxes. Gravity is one of the largest, most important energetic and influential forces in the universe. To understand its basis and nature, it is better to calculate its frequency first. Kinetic energy is equal to the gravitational energy. So, the relation between the energy of a planet and electromagnetic waves will be where n is the number of force lines passing through the surface of the planet. So we have Therefore And finally, the gravitational frequency will be equal to Now, according to the last formula, we compute the gravitational frequency between Earth and Sun. And the calculated amount of gravitational frequency between the Sun and the planets of the solar system should be as follows. Based on the calculations and obtained frequencies for gravitational fluxes, the electromagnetic spectrum chart can be considered as follows. From calculations and electromagnetic spectrum charts, it can be deduced that the frequency of gravitational fluxes is lower than gamma rays and higher than X-ray waves. Therefore, it can be said that anything that is a source of X-rays and gamma rays can also be an intrinsic source of gravitational waves. If we observe carefully, we can see that the natural sources of X-rays are very large stars, black holes, magnetars, supernova explosions, and neutron stars. As for the source of gamma rays, which are the most powerful, dangerous, and impactful rays, they also come from magnetars, active galactic nuclei, black holes, and so on. If we look at the electromagnetic spectrum diagram, we find that the visible light range constitutes just as a small portion in the middle of the diagram. To introduce a source of radiation light, its origin must be stars. In fact, stars are the only celestial objects capable of producing visible light with high intensity and quantity. The frequency range higher than visible light belongs to the magnetic waves. Considering our solar system apart from the Sun, which is the primary and powerful source of magnetic waves, only three planets, Earth, Jupiter, and Saturn, have the ability to generate magnetic waves, but their magnetic intensity and quantities are extremely low and negligible. One can consider their power and intensity compared to the Sun as close to zero.
In the electromagnetic wave range, after the magnetic waves range, there are X-rays. Very large stars and black holes are the sources of X-ray generation. We cannot find a planet that has the capability of producing these waves. Also, after X-rays in the dark realm, we can consider gravity and gamma rays, which their sources can be just considered as stars, black holes, etc. As a result, from the above discussions, it can be concluded that the source of gravitational fluxes is also stars, supernovae, magnetars, white dwarfs, black holes, etc. If we pay attention to the lifespan of a solar system, which includes a central star and planets orbiting around it, we find that the central star's lifespan is always about 500 million to 1 billion years longer than its planets. Therefore, it can be said that at first, the star is born, it grows and reaches its maturity, then the planets of that system are formed. In other words, as a result of the created gravitational forces in the star, its planets are formed. This is itself evidence that the star's supernovae Magnetars, white dwarfs, black holes, etc. are the sources of gravity. In fact, if we want to find the source of all electromagnetic spectrums, it must be said that approximately 99% of it could be traced back to stars, supernovae, magnetars, white dwarfs, black holes, and so on. <laughs>